Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is part two in the tutorial for how to use DevFuzz Foam to model a BAE Hawk. So we're going to start off with scaling the image and then once we've done that we're going to import the image into DevFuzz Foam 2. Then we're going to create the outlines and manipulate them. Then we're going to create the formers and after that we're going to create some lightning holes. It's quite a long video so what I'll do is I'll put some time codes in because if you already know how to scale our image or you know how to use various parts of DevFuzz Foam 2, you can jump to those parts. Guys, I apologise for the sound quality on some parts of the video. I was having difficulties on my Windows machine and getting good quality sound out of it. But I've just now purchased a new microphone, so hopefully in the future videos the sound will be a lot better. So let's get started with scaling our reference image with DraftSight. We need to get some basic dimensions from a, a good reference image or drawing. Uh, now this one here I found off the internet and it's a, it's a real good one because uh, it's got different versions of the hawk if, if you want to do a slightly different version. And it's also got these section cuts and these section cuts we can use later on in DevFuzz Foam 2 to get the, the profiles correct. So when, it, when we're cutting the fuselage sections out with the hot wire CNC machine we've got a, a better chance of getting something that's a bit more accurate. So for DevFuzz Foam 2, there's basically three measurements we need. We need the length of the fuselage, the height of the fuselage at the widest point, and the width of the fuselage at the widest point. But to get their measurements for the size of the plane I'm going to model, we, we need to scale this drawing in, in some sort of package so we can get fairly close measurements. On DevFuzz Foam 2, the height of the fuselage and the width of the fuselage don't have to be completely accurate because these, when we start to manipulate the outlines they do change a little bit but it's just really a starting point but we need to get the fuselage length reasonably accurate. Now this drawing here you can see it's been done in 172 scale and it's from my test previously this distance here is only about 150 millimeters so I, I could start to measure it um, with calipers and do some maths and work out what the dimensions are. But the way I prefer to do it is to use a program called DraftSight. I'll just bring that up. Now DraftSight is a, a free program that you can download. You just need to give them your email address and uh, they've got a, a pro version. What we're doing is the free version does more than enough. Uh, you can get it for Windows, Mac and even Linux I believe. Uh, and it works exactly the same. The menu is might look slightly different at the top, but the same principle works. I've done this on both my Windows machine running draft site and my Mac machine running draft site, and the process is exactly the same. So what we need to do is get our reference image. So if we go to insert, and you've got reference image, we've also got reference drawing. That's if you've got a drawing that's already in a CAD format, uh, like DXF or DWG and you can bring that straight in and just do some scaling on that. You, you might be lucky to find one in that, but the advantages of a reference image is that you, you can probably even do this from a photograph as well. So uh, let's get our image. And the image I want is there. So it's now asking us where we, where we want to put it all, we we'll specify later. So I just say OK, just select all the defaults there. And then just position your mouse with the cursor across here somewhere near the lines there and then just stretch it out as big as you big as you can. So there's our reference image. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna draw a line on the wingspan, measure it, and then we'll use the CAD program to actually scale the whole drawing. So we can then draw a line along there, take a measurement, draw a line up there, take a measurement, and draw a line across the jet intakes and take a measurement. So but before we do any drawing of the lines, by default, if we draw a line, I just select the line tool. So you can get to the line tool by draw line, selecting the line at the top, or you can just type line down in the command window at the bottom. So if I just draw a line there, 
and you can finish the line with other interval space bar. You can see that the line is going to be in white. And if we draw a white line on here, we're not going to see very much. So what we need to do is change the colour. And the way we change the colour of the is we go, go into layers. So you can get it from Format, Layers. Or there's a layer tool there. And we just select Layer. And we've only got one layer at the moment, which is enough for what we're doing. And we just change the line colour. So I'm going to change it to blue. So when we draw our line, we'll be able to see it on this drawing. Now the other thing we need to do is make sure to draw in our line that we've got entity snaps off. And what entity snaps uh, does is when we've got drawing entities on the drawing, we can snap to the ends or middles or you know various points. But the only place it's going to snap to at the moment is this drawing because this drawing is one entity. And what will happen is we draw a line, it'll just go down to the corner, one of the corners. So what we need to do is make sure Entity Snaps is, is off. And you, you can just do that, you just go on there. So at the moment it's not enabled, so it's off. And the F key 3 works as well, so if you just do F3. Yeah, so if you look in the command line now, it says Entity Snaps off. So what we want is Entity Snaps off. And you see if you just by toggling F3 or clicking on the button at the bottom, it's switching between on and off. So we want them off to start with. We will use them in, in a minute. So what we want to do now is select the, a line. So I'll just select it from the toolbar there. And what you really need for this is a scroll wheel mouse. So you can scroll right into the drawing using the wheel on the mouse. Get it as close as we can. And you see at the moment the line's going from side to side. What we can do is by pressing the ortho button there or pressing F8, it makes the lines up go, go uh, horizontal or vertical. So you can see now that's going straight up, which is a lot easier. So we come up to the other side, zoom in with the scrolling mouse, and then get there. And then press either enter or space bar. Now over on the, on the right hand side there, we can see you've got this palette open, and this is the properties palette. So if you go to Windows and look at palettes, you can, if yours isn't showing, just press properties there. So what we're doing now is we just select the line that we've drawn. And in the properties, it gives us the, the actual dimension. So you can see it's about 157, 234. So we want 650 millimeters. So, um, so that's way off. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale the drawing. So we can get the scale command from the menu there. So we'll just select scale. And now it's asking us uh, to specify the entities. So what we want is the drawing and the line. So we come over onto the somewhere in the black area, just click, hold down and just drag over the whole thing and click again. And you can see at the bottom there it says specify entities to found. And all we do now is we select enter because we finish with the entities. Now it's asking for a base point. And this is where we want the ent entity snaps back on. So if we go across to there, he snaps back on, or press the F3 key. You see entity snaps are back on. And we've got it selected for end. So it's either going to snap to there, or snap to this new line we've just drawn. So I'm going to use this as a base point. And if you look at the bottom of the window now, it's, it's saying reference or scale factor. So what we do is we type R for reference. And it's wanting a reference length. It basically wants to know what we're going to use to scale the, the drawing. So we're going to use the same line. So we select the endpoint there. And we go up to the other side. You see it selected that endpoint. And now it's asking us to specify the new length. So what we do now is type in 650 enter and then it's gone made the drawing
drawing a lot bigger. And to check we've done it correctly, we just highlight the line, click it, and if we look in the distance there, 650 millimeters. So, so we know now that drawing the scale correctly. So what we want to do now is draw another line on the fuselage, and I think I'll we want entity snaps off now, and we'll select the line. Command again, and then zoom in with a scroll wheel, probably somewhere around about there. And if we go right to the other end, zoom in, so that looks about at like the right distance there, and then space bar or enter. Now, if we Click on the line there and look in properties. So that's so that's given us 736 millimeters. So I think we can probably say 7 737 or 736. It's going to be uh, close enough for what we need. So that's one of the dimensions we feed into Devfuzz Phone 2. Now what we need is we need to do the so just press Escape to get out of that. We need another line. So this time we're going to do the, do the fuselage and probably look for about, where's the highest point? Probably around about there somewhere. And this doesn't have to be that accurate. And then go down to the bottom. And press spacebar. And if we just highlight the line and click it. So that's 127. The fuselage width, which we'll put into DevFuzz Foam. So a fuselage height, not fuselage width. So on the width now, we'll do the same thing. Draw another line. We'll look for the widest point, probably around right about there somewhere. And then come down. Around right about there. Space bar. And we've got we've got a distance there of 133. So these are the measurements we'll put into DevFuzz Foam 2 when we start the program. The main one really going to be is the fuselage length. But this drawing will also be very useful for doing the wings as well. Um, so what we'll do a bit later on, on on another video, we'll go through designing the wings, and we can use some free programs to get the wings out. Whereas DevFuzz Foam Two isn't a free program, but to be honest, I haven't really found anything else that, that that works really or does such a good job. So now we've got these dimensions, we'll go on to the next stage and then fire up Dev Fuzz Phone Two. The first thing Dev Fuzz Phone, a bit of a tongue twister that Dev Fuzz Phone Two does it checks for a license. If we just close the project window for a moment. And what you'll see is if it's if you don't have a license, it'll say I'm registered here. So there's a few settings on there. You can use it to measure. Uh, so you have to use it to measure. You go inches and millimeters. I'm working in millimeters in this, but uh, I can work in either really. I don't mind. I'm old school. I can do both. And we go to the projects window. And there's a lot of projects in Dev Fuzz Phone too that come uh, sample projects already installed. And you can copy and clone them, as you can see down on menus at the side there. They're quite useful to learn from as well. The one I've learned quite a lot from is the Mirage for doing the Hawk. When we're going to do the jet intakes, that bit's a little bit tricky to do. Uh, but looking how it has been done on this Mirage, then uh, I got the, got the gist of how it needs to be done. So on the Hawk, so what we'll do, we'll start a new one. Okay, we'll do this one. So we go new project a hawk and you can put a description there if you want. Now these are the measurements we've got from our uh, previous session with draft site. So as you can see the fuselage length needs to be uh, fairly accurate. So we got uh, I think we've got 736.597 which 
I think we'll go for 737. And as you can see, the dimensions for the fuselage height and width only need to be approximate. Because what will happen is when we go in further into the program, we'll actually manipulate the outline. So the dimensions are just a starting point, really. So for fuselage height, we had 127. And for fuselage width, we had 133. Go on to next. You see, I've done this a couple of times before. Now, this is where we need to get our image. So, we're going to use the same image we got the dimensions from. So, we go to set image. Clones. Freehawk. And there we go. So, what we need to do is crop crop the image to the part we want because we don't want all of this. So we select the crop tool. And so I think we'll use, we'll use that one there. We don't need the aerial part on it. So we'll just click, drag, click again. So there's the image. And what we need to do is you can see at the bottom it says you must cal calibrate an option to crop the image or we crop the image anyway. So well, with the calibrate what we do is we go so we can zoom in with the scroll wheel mouse again and get, get somewhere near there and then scroll in there go back there so that's the length calibrated so we can go OK on that Right, so now we'll go and get the top image, go to set image. BA hawk. Hawk. Right, so first thing we want to do is crop the image and we want So all we want them is the fuselage, so we don't need the the full width because we're only doing the fuselage here. And then Let's rotate it so we can flip the image here if it's facing the wrong way. So we'll do rotate. So it's the same as the top uh, side view, but now we need to calibrate. So we'll just uh, line it up as best we can. And then come along. somewhere I think and then we say okay so what that's doing is the measurements we put in at the beginning it's using this here to size that drawing to those dimensions I'm not sure why it does this we've got one image big one image small but it doesn't seem to matter anyway uh, as you see, we're going to the next section. So do next. Now, what we need to do now is, is manipulate the outlines. And as you can see, uh, it doesn't look much like a hawk at the moment. Uh, one other thing we have got on the fast foam too is this thing called expert mode. And by clicking that one, you can jump the various sections. Uh, the previous version, you have to go through the wizard on every step. It's quite handy just to have this here and just to save. Uh, that's okay because we've already got it saved anyway. So what we need to do now is manipulate these outlines. And we, we go onto this section here, edit actual outlines graphically. Now this part can take a, a, a bit of time, but um, basically what we need to do is pull these control points or nodes uh, to as near, near as we can in the actual outline of the drawing. Uh, if you're familiar with Photoshop or the pen tool, it's a very similar way and we have these handles where we can click on handle. So we click on it 
you can load to the file. I think it's using in uh, CAD terms, I think it's used in uh, splines, I think. Um, by using these handles, you can alter the, the shape of the spline. So basically what we need to do is get this as close as we can. And then if we can't get it close enough, we can add control points, uh, extra control points. So we've got a smoothing control point. We've got a corner control point. And the corner control point we'll use down here when we're doing these ducts here, because we've got a very sharp angle there. And you can only get that with a corner control point. And then the other option is to delete. And then we can zoom in. And we've got a measure there as well. Mm. So we'll start on the top and just basically start pulling them. Click on the control point and then click it somewhere near. And I find it best just to pull all fairly near to start with. Let's see, we're back there, we're out a bit, we should be out there somewhere. You generally don't want to add too many control points. So you can see there that that one's quite a bit out. But sometimes you can get it nearer by manipulating the handle, which, which has done it a little bit, but it's still not enough, I don't think. So we probably will need another smoothing point there. Quite often you can get the shape just by moving the control points to different places. So we're not far out there now. Let's just try and move that a little bit. So that's not too bad there if I just a little bit there. That's not bad. And then we can slow them a little bit. Sometimes if you just move up and down it tends you can see it following your drawing, so that's not too bad there. Now this section down here is a little bit more tricky, so we can use the handle here to see if that's going to give us any extra but it's not really so i think we are going to need another smoothing point there so click smoothing point probably on that there somewhere let's just try and error this yeah there's no magic way of doing it So that's not looking too bad. And we can look back there, that will probably just go a little bit. So we can handle. Yeah, so that's pretty good for the top there. So then we do the same, do the same to the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll speed this next section up. Yeah, you can obviously watch me doing that. And then we'll come back to the side view. I'm not too bad there on the fuselage now. So now we're going to do the side view. Sorry, the top view. So we'll just pull them in. Go a little bit of that bit in. If you want to scroll wheel mouse, this is a, not the easiest thing to do with a touchpad. Yeah, that's not doing too bad there. So the dimensions we put in earlier for the width and height, you can see they're not don't need to be that accurate. They're just really a starting point. Because as we're manipulating these, we're moving them. So we'll pull that down into shape there. And get a bit. I'll 
up on another one in there. Not looking too bad now. So let's pull this one in. And you see now the starting to get the shape, but we need a kind of two corner points here, one here and one down here to give us that sharp change of direction. So we'll put one there, one into there, and then we'll put another one on there and pull that. You see on the corner control points we've got, so what I try to do is line them up. Because the thing with a hot wire CNC machine, you're only going to be cutting with the hot wire on, on straight sections, so you're not going to be able to get this rounded anyway. So, let's go to some of these points here. Zoom in a little bit more, maybe we could zoom down a bit with that one. And use that handle there to straighten the line up a bit. So we're getting there. So let's see if we can move this one. They are just about there. How's that looking? Yeah, the nose section's a bit out of it. Right, so let's get this nose section. So we also need some more control points here. Sometimes just by dragging them up the line you can get a hit quite close. So let's drag that. As I said this is trial and error this and it does take a bit of fiddle with. And I've spent sometimes nearly a whole evening just messing with these. But with practice you, you get better at it. I think they're not looking too bad there now. Yeah, it looks a bit like a hawk now. <laughs> right. So what we'll do now, we go on to the next section. And what you can do if you want to, you can export these outlines, bring them back into a new design of a, a lot bigger design. So what we'll do here, we'll do a save. And we'll go to the next section. Now this next section now is where Dentfile's foam is going to go through and create all the formers, make different spacings, like the same spacing all the way through. And it can't start right at the beginning because you'll never get a, your machine to do that right down to a point. So the end section is probably going to be done by hand. So I use XPS foam. Uh, the pink stuff we get in the UK, and that's 60 millimeter. And you can see the first form is going to start at 40.74, and you can you can adjust the distances if you want, and you can tell it how many forms you want to create. If you do that, you're going to end up with a funny size here. So I leave that there. So in the next section here, it asks you for what shape you want the former. Looking back at the mirage that came with the Fast Foam, it uses full control spline formers, uh, elliptical, the egg shape or elliptical or circular. I actually used that my Hawk Hurricane to get all the formers out and that worked quite well on that. Uh, but it's a lot simpler shape than uh, the, what complicates it here is the is the intake the intakes here. I did think about just doing it straight across there and then add them as a separate part but I thought no let, let's see if we can do it. So what we'll do is we'll select full control. So what will happen is when we go into it, we'll have a load of points in it which can we 
manipulate and we can use some of the uh, section cut drawings in the, the image to get these shapes better so we're okay for that you can see these are all the forms that DevFuzz Firm's created and you can see it's getting stuck in there you're not going to get that very end bit so I'm going to have to make that little end bit there if we do a if we do a quick look at it when it's actually created you can see that's not looking too bad for a, a hawk we can just rotate this around but as you can see is where the jet intakes are basically all it's doing is it's looking at that form looking at that form and using some clever mathematics to work out how to get there this section here where now this is changed on their fuzz phone too before we didn't have these where you could put the uh, raster plans in and you can turn them off if you want so you can turn them off and sometimes it's quite useful to turn one of them off when you're looking to get something near so obviously you can see we've got a little bit of work to do here to get these jet intakes better you can turn all the formers off you can just have a look through if i turn them all off that's the actual path of, uh, that's used to create the formers Right, so we can exit out of there. So what we need to do now to get this section right here, we need to add some formers. And what we need to do is add a former right here, and that'll allow it to create that shape. Rather, because at the moment what it's trying to do is trying to go from there to there to get the form, and we don't want that. What we want it to do is just that. So, um, so if we go to edit formers. So here I've got all the formers, it all shows you all the control points. So I go to add new former, and that new former we want somewhere we've manipulated at the moment, we'll just get it in there. Right, and if we go in on the bottom there, green one up there, so we can just line that up. I mean, what we actually need to do is create another one because it's still going to go from here to here so go to formers add new former and we'll just put it in here for the time being and then go in and move it as close as we can get to the So if you look now on the formers there, six and seven, there's only a millimetre between them. And if we do a 3D preview, you see it's looking a, a little bit better now. So it's still a little bit out there. Let's go back in and put a tweak on that. This is one of the parts that can be very time consuming and fiddly. <laughs> right, so let's. So it's just a matter of manipulating these formers here so they're right on the edge. If you look at the bottom drawing there, so it's right on the edge there. So just by moving them around until they more or less line up. And, and then if you have a look at the 3D view now. You can see it's not looking too bad now. And if we take the raster plans off, but at the moment it looks a bit like a hedgehog at the moment, we'll just fit around here. But what we're going to do now is bring in some sections, views. So what we can do now is if we go back and if we look at this former, So I think the one we want is this former number eight. Yeah, former number eight. If we select former number eight, there. No, not number eight, number seven. There we go, you can see it's highlighted there. So we edit former number seven, and then we go into edit full screen. Lots of these parameters here I don't very often mess mess with. Uh, 
because we've set these all as control forms as flange, we don't need to change any of this. All right, so I'm going to edit. So what we need to do now is bring a background image in so that we can get the shape looking something like a hawk. So we use our same drawing again. So we've got the background image. Select the drawing there. And we want the section E. Let's turn the transparency. There we are. So if I was a transparency, see there you can see you can see nothing all all. And what we want is we want this, so we're around about here somewhere. So if we use this section E cut, that should get us somewhere reasonably close. So what I'm going to do is uh, crop. Crop that image. I think what I'm going to do is flip it the other way. We'll see why in a minute. There we go. And now we need to calibrate it. You see it's not particularly straight either. <laughs> so this is the same as we did when we did the outlines. So something like that. So now this is coming into our drawing here, so what we need to do is try and manipulate these points to get it as close to the shape as possible. Now this section cut is a bit further back on the fuselage, so um, as long as we can get it somewhere near so we can start by bringing the points in So I think that's about as close as we can get. So, so what we do then is we go close. And if we have a look at the 3D preview, hopefully it might look a little bit better. So you can see what's happening now. We need to do a similar thing back here on this one now to get this shape in. Yeah. So basically we just do the same process. So what I'll do is rather than take you through all that but you can see where it's getting there and we need to do a similar thing on on the next former about to get somewhere near so basically I've done the same thing on these formers here so if we go exit here and we go on to uh, edit formers we go to former number eight so I've done a similar thing on that one. Basically just pulled that into shape. And then on form number nine, we've done a similar thing there as well. And so if we look at our 3D preview now, so it's not looking too bad now. The other thing I've done as well is I've deleted the formers between uh, form 10 and form 15. And because this section is fairly straight, we can just make this in one piece on the CNC machine. And it'll probably save us a lot of gluing all the individual parts together, which might make it a little bit more streamlined. So once we've done that, we can then move on. And this section here is we can, we can do some further manipulation on the formers by defining custom synchro points. To be honest, I've never used this section. I haven't found a need to yet, so I'll right, go on to the next. If we're gonna cover our model with some sort of sheet in we can actually add that but I never I never do this anyway and then you can put some spars in for this BA hall it doesn't work out very well putting put spars in because uh, they just get in the way of where the EDF is going to go so we'll just ignore that section as well so here we are on the lightning hole section and we've got three options here with, with no lightning holes so we'll just stand and have a solid piece apply lightning holes Give us an edge thickness and then we've got to apply custom lightning holes so if we do an edge thickness which could sometimes be quite useful we just say 
8 millimeter and get it to apply it to our old formulas. You see what we get. You can't do it on the first one because there isn't enough distance there to do that. So you could make it a bit thinner if you wanted to. But if you look at all the formulas, you've got an edge thickness going all the way around, which might be what you want. And I actually use that in my Hawker Hurricane. So if you do a 3D preview of that, just switch them all off and start and then just have a look at a couple of them. So you can see what we're getting there. And I actually, actually created the jet intakes there, which we don't want in this model. But we can put the rear one on as well. So that's not a bad option. And it might be what you want. But what we're going to do with this BAE Hawk, we're just going to get rid of them all first, so no lightning holes. And what we're going to do is start at number seven. And then we're going to customize the selected. And then what we're going to do is apply that customization to down to 11. And we've got three different options there. We've got ellipse, rectangle. We've got rectangle. And apply. You see that's not really what we could make it smaller, but probably not a good option for what we're doing. Then we've got hole. We apply that. That's something where we could bring it in and make it smaller. Uh, but for this, we want to actually create the jet tube for the fan to sit in. So I'm going to use ellipse. And 70 millimeters, I think, could have been in here before and tested the 70 millimeters, kept the setting. You can alter that set, these settings to what you want. So will it be in a uh, and the ellipse, if we set the X and Y to the same, we end up with a circle. The angle one there, what we could then do by putting an angle in there, we should put 30 in as a test. And it's just going to spin it around for us. But for this BA hawk, that isn't what we want. So we'll set that back to 70, and back to zero, because we, want, we just want the tube. And then we'll go to OK. And then we'll apply that from 7 to 11. Now, on number 11, we're going to get an error because of the hole is too big, but we can fix that afterwards. So we apply that. Yes. And you see we've got the holes there. And if we go on to number 11, we're going to customize the rectitude. See, that's too big. So through my testing, I've worked out this needs to be 32 millimeters. So hopefully that's going to be okay, letting enough thrust out. And on two to six, what we'll do is we'll just create a, an area for the battery and receiver. And while we'll do that, we'll do a similar thing. We'll just customize selected. And we use hold this time. It seems to remember whatever you've done last. So we'll say OK for that. The other thing I like to do is line it up on this dotted line at the bottom. Hopefully that's going to line all the the bottoms of them up, but we'll see. So we'll apply that from two to six. And then what we need to do is just go in and mend each one. It's easier to do that than try to do each one individually. So all we can do now, we can just go. And you've got different options there where you want the symmetry. If we keep it on the vertical axis, as we go up, it, it does just what we want. Apply that. Number four, customer selected. The canopy is going to be coming in here, so that's not going to matter too much. So 
So if we do a 3D preview now. It does take a little while to generate this. It doesn't seem to make a through hole there. Uh, when we look later at some of the elements, it, it does do it. So um, I don't know if this is a bug in the software. You can see as we're building up the front door as well. So that's still making a little bit of heat plate around there. So that's how we do our lightning holes. So that concludes part two. In part three, we'll go on to do the wing slot and the canopy slot. And then in part four, we'll actually go on to make it. So if you made it this far through the video, guys, thanks very much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe if you wish to. And part three should be out fairly soon.